Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to very quickly take a look at the phenomenon and mechanism behind the aurora or aurorae. I am taking a closer look here at the sun due to the visibility of the aurora in Ireland as far south as Cork City over the past couple of days. Uh, I unfortunately did not get to see the aurora. It was a little cloudy when I was out over the weekend. Taking a look at the sun here, we can see a few sunspots and we can see these filaments extending around the side. This is the kind of view that we would normally only get during an eclipse. You don't really get to see these filaments around the outside unless the light of the actual sun is blocked. There are solar telescopes, there are ways that you can observe this kind of thing, but it's not something to attempt without special equipment. Uh, not only do you need to protect your eyes, but when you're looking at the sun, you usually need to protect your telescope as well. Taking a look at the sun here over a couple of days, we can take a look at it rotate and we can see that it has a few sunspots scattered around it. These sunspots are almost certainly simulated. Uh, they're not reflective of how many sunspots the sun actually has at the moment. And I should be able to demonstrate that by going a couple of years into the past, back into 2020. And it looks like, yeah, we've got the same sunspots there. We shouldn't. 2020 was about the bottom or the minimum of the 11 year cycle that the sun goes through. The sun goes through a cycle every 11 years, going from hardly any sunspots, hardly any solar flares, hardly any activity, up to a peak about you know five five and a half years through when there's loads of sunspots loads of solar activity and then it tapers off again these filaments these flares that we see stretching out from the sun uh, especially bigger kind of denser promontories like this one here uh, maybe this one down here as well those are well really streams of particles that are being controlled by the sun's magnetic field. The magnetic field of the sun, it really extends all the way out to the earth. And these uh, emissions from the sun, they contain a lot of high energy particles. Now, photons, photons are pretty light. The actual light that we see coming from the sun, photons are almost massless. I won't get into the physics at the moment, but electrons, radiation, alpha radiation, beta radiation, uh, things that are usually a collection of protons and neutrons. They're a little bit, well, they're all very, very tiny from our perspective, but collections of protons and neutrons are a bit heavier than electrons, which are a bit heavier than photons. And electrons can be controlled or moved around using a magnetic field. In fact, if we very quickly zoom back into the sun here, you'll see the shape of the sun's magnetic field. Uh, just like any magnet, uh, if the sun was lying on a bed of iron filings, we'd see these kinds of loops coming out the top, around the side, and then back in at the bottom. So the sun is a giant magnet with a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole and a big kind of curved shape, kind of like a horseshoe shape of magnetic field around the sides. And that magnetic field stretches way, way out into space. Really, the sun's magnetic field, its influence stretches around the entire solar system. But I will get back to that in a minute. First or second, I suppose, we need to look at the Earth. And the Earth's magnetic field goes from around the south to around the north. Just like the sun, we'll have lines of magnetism, our magnetic field, uh, sort of flowing from the North Pole to the South Pole. So around the sides of the Earth, around the equator here, and at the North Pole and at the South Pole, well, that's where the magnetic field funnels back down. As we can see with the Sun, we can see those lines at the North and the South, they're pointing back in towards the Sun, rather than being around the Sun. We can kind of see that faint shape there. When particles from the sun crash into the Earth, photons are usually able to get straight through. Our magnetic field isn't going to push on photons that much. Whereas electrons and other particles, they do get pushed around by our magnetic field. So even though material from the sun is crashing into the Earth's magnetosphere, uh, you know, around our atmosphere, um, even though the sun's, ma uh, sun's material is crashing into the Earth all over, including around the equator, the magnetic field of the Earth catches those 
high energy particles and guides them to the north and to the south pole. Now, unfortunately, I can't seem to simulate aurorae in Stellarium. If anyone knows me to do it or a plugin I can download, do let me know. But the aurorae, if you haven't seen them, they look like glowing curtains of light in the sky. Uh, they're comparable uh, in impressiveness to the Milky Way, but the Milky Way is static. It sits there in the sky. The aurorae will dance and flow around as they are streams of particles crashing into the Earth's atmosphere. And it is when the magnetic field guides these high energy particles through our magnetic field and into our atmosphere, well, when the high energy particles collide with our upper atmosphere, they generate light. The high energy particles pass on some of that energy to gases in our atmosphere like oxygen and nitrogen and they then light up, they illuminate. Saturn has aurorae around the north and south pole as does Jupiter. Uh, there are some very nice photos of Jupiter showing its bright blue aurorae around, I believe its north pole is the one that was photographed. Jupiter has a very powerful magnetic field so the exact same thing happens. Energy from the sun comes rushing towards Jupiter. It's caught by the magnetic field before it collides with the atmosphere, and then it's pulled down in towards the poles. And this is why we see aurorae at the North and South Pole. They are the aurora australis and aurora borealis, not the aurora equatorialis, which would be around the equator. When we have very powerful storms, the amount of material crashing into the magnetic field increases, and how far down on the Earth, how close to the equator, those high energy particles are guided into the Earth's atmosphere, that increases as well. So generally, especially with weaker storms or kind of background aurorae, they happen around the North and South Pole. But as you add more particles and more energy, you'll start to see the aurora lower and lower and lower. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to see the last aurorae. But we are not up to the peak of our current solar cycle just yet. Uh, this current solar cycle is expected to peak uh, around 2026, 2027, and then it'll get back to its minimum around 2030. So we are not even halfway through the current solar cycle. We are getting closer to the peak than the beginning, but we're not at the peak just yet. And already, aurorae have been visible as far south as us here in Ireland. Whereas normally aurorae, they'd be a little higher up, closer to inside the Arctic Circle. You know, if you go to Iceland or the top of Norway or even the top of Finland or Sweden, then you're going to be in with a chance of seeing the aurorae. Usually, in the past, there has been bigger aurorae, way down, uh, down as far as the Mediterranean, at least. There has been some very big solar storms in the past, but that was drawing higher solar maximums. The sun go goes through an 11 year cycle, but sometimes that cycle has higher peaks, sometimes it has lower peaks. We have been through periods of time where the sun barely shows any sunspots, even at the highest portion of its peak. Uh, there was a period of time known as the Maunder Minimum a few hundred years ago, where the sun had very, very low activity. Back in the 1950s, the sun was showing very high activity through every one of its peaks. So it looks like we're not going to get as much activity as the 1950s or 1850s peaks that the solar 11 year cycle has had. But it does look like we're going to see more sunspots and solar storms over the next couple of years than we have well, for the past while, back as far as 2000, maybe uh, around 2020 and some of the previous solar cycles, there was very low activity, but it looks like that activity is starting to build back up again. So even if you didn't get to see the most recent aurora, this is part of a cycle. The auroras and the solar storms would be expected to continue to get stronger over the next couple of years. So we may have some even more powerful aurorae visible even further south in the near future. So if you didn't get to see this particular a southerly rush of the northern lights, or if you're on the other side of the planet, if you didn't get to see the aurora australis closer to the equator, of course, the Earth's magnetic field is going to pull the solar wind to both sides of the planet. At the moment, we're coming into northern summer, so our northern hemisphere is tilted a little bit more towards the sun, so we will probably get a little bit more of the magnetic energy. But as we come into winter here in the north, you know, the sun doesn't care about summer and winter here on Earth. Its activity is still going to be increasing for the next couple of years, so we may have some more powerful aurorae 
Australis going on soon as well. I do hope that you get a chance to see the next Aurorae. The Aurorae are a difficult thing to track. There are plenty of services out there to tell you when Aurorae are coming up but it is hard to predict them far in the future and so it is hard to make videos preparing people uh, about, about what to do all you really need to do to see the aurora is be far enough north during a powerful enough solar storm it helps if you're in the countryside and if you have a clear sky of course hopefully that will give you a good chance and some hope for seeing the aurora in the near future if you enjoyed this quick explanation or 10 minute long explanation then do make sure to like the video and subscribe to this youtube channel if you'd like to see more you can also read a little bit of this information on my website creepyscontent.ie so thank you for watching and until next time